Hi, welcome to EC&M Ask. This is a series of short Q&A videos where just some of the subject matter experts here at ECNM uh, jump online and answer some of the specific questions that you have. So we'll go ahead and get started. And uh, the first question I've got, it seems to be one that we get uh, quite a bit, uh, especially in safety training. People ask, do I have to wear my electrical PPE to operate a disconnect switch? Now, some people say, oh man, they make us uh, jump into a 40 cal suit. You know, every time we have to operate a, a switch on an MCC bucket like that. And well, the answer is it depends. Okay, as I always like to say, but uh, first of all, if your company has a procedure or a policy that they want you to wear certain PPE to do a certain task, that's what you do, right? You follow your company's procedures. And, um, but let's take a look at what NFPA 70E has to say. That's our standard for electrical safety in the workplace. So there's a table in NFPA 70E, and it talks about the probability that there's going to be an electrical arc flash if I do a certain task, such as operate a disconnect switch. Now, it says, if, if uh, is there a probability of an arc flash by just operating a disconnect switch? And the answer is, well, not if I meet the six requirements for normal operation. And that's the opinion of the experts on the 70E committee. Okay, anything can happen, right? So <clears throat> let's talk about what those six requirements are. It says that uh, if my equipment is installed properly, if it's been maintained, if uh, it's being used per manufacturer's instructions in the UL listing and labeling, and all the doors are closed and secured, and the covers are in place, and all the bolts are in place, and so forth, and it says, no, there's no likelihood of an arc flash. Now, I would still um, follow, you know, just general safe work practice. I would stand to the side. I would probably put on at least a leather glove, stand to the side, and turn my head and operate that switch, and yes, if I had the face shield on, I would go ahead and face the switch as I operate it. But once again, uh, you have to determine if it says, hey, if you don't meet, if you don't meet all of those six requirements for normal operation, you, the worker, have to go ahead and take some additional actions to be safe. Well, what are those? I don't know. It says you're the electrical professional. You figure out what you need to do to be safe. So above all, be safe. Follow your company's procedures and policies, and then... Uh, Make sure that you check for normal operation. Do that risk assessment before you operate any equipment. Uh, another question I got, this is a good one. It says, what happened with definitions in the 2023 NEC? Yeah, it changed, okay? And just the, what they did is, if you look at it, you see a lot of N by, uh, you think, oh man, these are all new definitions. No, they just moved them from elsewhere. So if you remember, it used to be throughout the code, usually section dot two in different articles, we might have some definitions. And then last edition of the code, they divided them in the uh, article 100 on definitions into part one, part two, and part three, right? Uh, general information, general definitions, over a thousand volts and then hazardous locations. Now they're all, they've taken all the definitions from throughout the code and they put them into article 100 in alphabetical order, of course. And uh, now we've got 37 pages of definitions in Article 100, and they're not broken up by uh, the different um, uh, into different parts. It's all just in one part, and the definitions just appear alphabetically. So anyway, those are a couple of quick questions that we had. Hope we got those answered for you. Uh, keep putting those questions in into the chat sections, comment sections of the uh, various webinars and tech talks and in these ECNM ask whatever you take a look at and articles and so forth. And we'll see you in the next Tech Talk.